Welcome everyone to part 14 of this outdoor kitchen build. Today I'm going to cover up this cinder block with manufactured stone. Before we get started, let me share with you the kind of stone that we're going to be using for this project. So this is a manufactured stone and it's meant to be dry stacked, or at least that's the look you're supposed to have, which means you're not going to be putting mortar in between the joints. For someone who doesn't have a lot of experience like myself, this should be a lot easier to do. Before you get started with anything, spray down your block. That way they're wet, they absorb some water and they won't absorb the water from the mortar and weaken the bond. Now the most important thing when you're installing is you want your stone to be installed in a level manner, which means you're gonna need some kind of reference. Now I don't have to worry too much about that because I have these joints on these cinder blocks which are going to uh, be a perfect reference because I know that they're already level. But if I didn't have these as a reference, I would snap a chalk line every 12 inches or so. That way I have some kind of a guide to make sure that I am straight. Now, in my opinion, one of the most difficult parts of this installation is that you have all these different stones, all different sizes, and you want them to kind of fit in a way that looks nice. So before you start your installation, another step as far as preparation goes is that you want to take a whole bunch of stone out and start placing them on the floor and see how they fit very much like a puzzle. And once you have a large section built on, your, on the ground, then you can transfer that to your wall. And I think that's gonna make the process easier and a lot faster. This part is very time consuming and you're gonna probably at some point say, just screw it, I'm gonna start installing. Don't do it. Try to stack as much as you can on the floor to get a good layout and then you can start your installation. It is going to be a lot easier in the long run. Now I did install a section of this the other day to see how this process would work out and there are some changes that I made here now that I want to share with you because it's going to make your installation a lot faster. The first little mistake that I made the other day was that I should have used a straight edge on the floor when I dry fitted everything because that way I know everything is already straight and knowing that my base here is straight it will go up on the wall exactly the way it should here. Now just so that you are not confused this whole layout is going to be going on the wall this way. So this is the bottom, this is going to be the top. So when I start installing, these pieces are going to go down first and then these pieces will go on last. So another thing that I did last time that did not work out too well was I tried to include in the dry fit layout on the ground the corners as well. And the corners are hard to fit because they're a weird shape. So I left them out. We're going to install the corners on their own and then fill in the gaps. Type S mortar will work just fine for this installation, or you could use a mortar that is specifically for stone veneer installations. Uh, that actually does cost a little bit more money, but supposedly it has a stronger bond. I'm making pencil marks here so that way I know exactly where each piece is supposed to go to start each new row. To install the veneer, have a spray bottle handy. You're going to be spraying the back sides of each piece of veneer prior to putting your mortar. Apply about a half inch bed of mortar on each piece before installing it on the wall. By the way, here's a huge tip. Take a picture of your layout because you're gonna need to look at that from time to time because you're gonna forget which piece you took and where it's supposed to go on your wall. I found that the easiest way to cut down these pieces when you need to is to use an angle grinder with a masonry blade. Since I'm installing on cinder block, I don't need to do that much prep work before I can start my installation. But if you're gonna be installing on other surfaces like plywood, definitely do your research. You're gonna to need to put, install a vapor barrier and you're also gonna to need to do a scratch coat. So definitely research everything first. So another thing that I learned here from this experience is that if you clean out the squeeze out prior to installing the next row, you're gonna get the pieces to fit much tighter. It's gonna look better. This is what I meant earlier when I said I was going to close in the corners. Now we're just going to add the corners and try to fit pieces and we're going to have to make some cuts here and there uh, until everything kind of fits nice and tight.
It is now time to install my oven surround and this is going to serve two purposes. The first is it's going to look nice, but the more important purpose is that I need to cover up the exposed edge of my veneer that I'm installing on the wall. So I need something to that's going to meet the top of that. So this is going to give it a much more finished look. Rather than doing one large template, I found that it's going to be a lot easier if I just do one piece at a time. These are actually large paving stones and the easiest way to cut them is with my circular saw and a masonry blade. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. To match the curved contour of the oven, I'm going to be using this grinding wheel to get a little bit of a curve here. For larger curves, I'm going to be using my angle grinder with my masonry blade and just going to be making the repeated passes on both sides until it splits apart.
I'm gonna press pause on the stone installation at this point. The right way to do this is to install your stone and have it meet the bottom of your countertops. So I have granite counters coming and once they're installed, that's when I'm gonna finish the stone installation. Now, if you wanna see the rest of the stone installation and you wanna see the counters being installed, subscribe and hit that bell so that way you get notified when that video drops and you'll be able to see this whole thing finally finished. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope everyone is doing well and I will see you in the next one.